Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Project Maple Leaf. Today we're going to figure out how to disassemble this Dana 60. Depending upon how you got it out of the junkyard and the condition of the axle, uh, there could be things that your axle has on it that this one doesn't or things that this axle has on it that yours doesn't. But stay tuned and check it out. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to remove off this axle is any of the easy stuff, right? So obviously your brake caliber, just a couple of bolts. Usually there's a bracket holding a brake hose on. Very, very simple stuff, no big deal. Slide your brake rotor off. You can do that on both sides. There's also a spring perch up here. We'll get after that. All that stuff just basically comes off. And this is where maybe a cordless, uh, you know, battery operated impact gun will help you with some of these bolts that have been in there since this axle was originally put together at the Ford factory and then put underneath that Super Duty pickup truck. So without further ado, let's get after it. All right guys, so right up here, obviously we had the factory spring perch for the Super Duty that was an 18 millimeter bolt with a bracket on the front as well as a bracket on the back that hold all your, your you know, brake hoses and you know power steering and your vacuum lines and all that kind of stuff. So it, it allows you to kind of swing that out of the way. You can cut your brake lines off, you can unbolt them if you want. I like to cut them off because it doesn't drip as badly. Um, and cut off the vacuum line. You're not gonna use any of that. All that stuff's gonna have to be switched over to a uh, different style for the Jeep. Um, but again, if you do all that, it kind of cleans up this whole area dramatically. As you can see, it already looks a lot better and a lot less congested. It allows you to access the ball joint bolts, the brake caliper bolts, and all those kinds of things much easier. So let's get back to it. Now that all that other junk is gone, you have very, very easy access to the back side of your brake calipers. Now there's two ways that you can take these off. You can spin out these larger bolts. There's one here, one here that attach it to the knuckle, or you can take out the slide pin bolts, remove the caliper itself, and then have to remove the bracket secondary. Um, I like to just go after these guys first. Uh, sometimes they can be a little rotted on there. Um, I usually spray everything a couple of days prior to doing this kind of work with some penetrant um, just to make sure that when I get around to it, it makes it a little bit easier, but these don't look that bad. So let's get after it. Again, with a battery operated impact, makes quick work of it. Okay, the next part of this disassembly process, right? After you have your brake caliper off, your brake rotor will just slide off. It'll expose the hub. Now, the hub is held on with four studs that slide through the knuckle and have a bolt on the backside, very similar to the JK Dana 44, Dana 30 unit bearing. Um, these are just hex nuts as opposed to the Dana 44, Dana 30, which is actually a 12 point. Um, they're a lot bigger on these and you have more space to access it, especially with a couple of a uh, couple of extensions and things like that. So spinning them off with an impact is definitely the way to go. The problem is this axle shaft is held into the hub by a little snap ring. Now, the problem with that snap ring is it is so far back inside that hub that you need a special pair of snap ring pliers in order to extend all the way back in there and then have the leverage to squeeze them hard enough to remove it. I will link to these in the video description. You can also find that link in another one of my videos where I show you how to change a Super Duty hub bearing assembly. But 
Anyway, guys, let's get back to it. This one down inside there, as you can see, has some dirt and grime and stuff in it from a gasket that was failing and the hub consequently failing. This piece right here that I'm tapping on, this is the end of your axle shaft, right? That's your 35 spline outer that locks to the hub. This out here is your hub assembly, okay? So these splines will lock to the axle shaft splines with your locking hub. Now, right at the top on this particular side, right? I mean, this snap ring could really be in anywhere in there. Right at the top, you might see way back deep in there, two little holes to kind of put the ends of these pliers in. And when you squeeze them, it opens the snap ring and you can usually get it out. Sometimes it fights with you a little bit, but we're gonna try our luck and see what we can do. Both of these have to come out, this side as well as the other. And then there we have it, right? That is the snap ring. And you get the idea now with these holes that you put those pliers in there and squeeze it and it opens this ring and allows it to come off of the flange that holds the axle shaft in that hub. Now, once that hub bearing assembly has that clip removed, you can actually get in here and take these four nuts off. There's one here, one here. Spin the knuckle to the other side like you're turning. There'll be two on the other side in the same position and you are almost on your way to getting that hub assembly off and the axle shaft out. Now it's a good trick sometimes to actually leave one of these nuts screwed on a little bit to give you a place to um, hit it with a hammer. Um, that way you can hit it with a hammer and kind of work that hub assembly off the other side because it will be kind of rusted and corroded on there. And it's a tight fit, so even when it's new, sometimes it's hard to get that hub assembly off. But let's give that a shot. Now, the Super Duties have a vacuum operated or manually operated four wheel drive system. This is a vacuum port. Your Jeep does not have that, we're not gonna use it. We're gonna take that out, we're gonna weld that shut so no water or dirt or crud gets down in there and inside of your hub. But in order for that vacuum assist seal to work, there is a seal inside here. This is just a seal that goes all the way around. So we're gonna bang that out from the other side. And then once that seal is removed, we'll be able to take the axle shaft out and then remove the knuckle. Once we do that on the other side, this axle's pretty much cleaned off and unbolted to the point where we can start cutting all this junk off the axle. So stick around, let's get back to it. Now to knock that seal out, I'm just gonna use a really big brass punch, but you can really use anything. Put it up on the edge of the seal on the back side. Start knocking it out. Just work your way all the way around. At this point, you were able to see how easily that axle shaft came out. Sometimes they're gonna fight you. The pry bar that I use for that, okay, is gonna be just a big crowbar, right? Um, couple feet long, but it's got this angled tip on it. So I was basically able to use the little notch here that's kind of machined into the end of the axle shaft and use that against the housing to pry and knock it loose and get it out of that inner seal. But now it's time to remove the knuckle off of this side of the axle. I'm gonna do that by removing the lower ball joint nut first, then I'm gonna remove the upper, hit it with a hammer, and it should drop right out. These you're definitely gonna to wanna to spray with some penetrant before you get to this point. Luckily, I sprayed these a couple of days ago. Hopefully, they come out without spinning the ball joint inside of the nut. However, if that happens, the top of the ball joint actually has a spot to put like a, a giant Allen key in there. So you can put that Allen key in there and then loosen them with a wrench and, and take the nut out without spinning the ball joint. 
that usually works pretty well. But that's basically how you take a Super Duty Dana 60 apart. I have to go over and finish repeating that process on the driver's side of the axle, make that parts pile over there just a little bit bigger. But guys, that's it. We are well on our way to stripping this axle down and starting to get everything cut off. So join me in a future video. We're gonna get started on that.